Welcome back to the Tui Report. Ever wondered what would happen to a federal government agency employee involved in corruption? A quick Google search shows several potential consequences that could happen to that corrupt individual depending on the specific circumstances of the case. Here are a few possibilities. 1. Disciplinary action. The federal agency may take disciplinary action against the employee, such as a suspension, demotion, or termination. 2. Criminal charges. If the corruption involved criminal activity such as fraud or embezzlement, the employee could be criminally charged and, if convicted, face fines and or imprisonment. 3. Civil penalties. In addition to criminal charges, the employee may also face civil penalties such as having to pay back any ill-gotten gains and or being barred from holding certain positions in the federal government. And 4. Investigation by the Inspector General. The Inspector General of the agency in question may conduct an investigation into the corruption and if the employee is found to have violated any laws or regulations, the case could be referred to the appropriate authorities for further action. But what would happen if there were 108 ATF agents, possibly more, who were proven to be involved in corruption in the agency? Nothing. You think Brandon will let you touch his attack dogs? On May 2nd of last week, the U.S. Office of Special Counsel or OSC notified our beloved President Brandon and Congress regarding significant instances of mismanagement, waste, and illegal employment practices at the ATF. They published a short write-up under the news section of their website, osc.gov. I'll share the link in the description. According to two whistleblowers from ATF's Human Resources Office, the agency granted law enforcement pay and benefits to agents and investigators filling non-law enforcement roles, such as those in human resources, which were deliberately misclassified under the Law Enforcement Job Series. The agency investigated the matter and confirmed the allegations, revealing a prolonged misclassification of upper-level positions that caused the ATF to overpay its agents by millions of dollars over a five-year duration. And it gets worse, because they don't have the exact figure. It could be much higher than their current estimate since the illegal job classifications had been prevalent in the ATF for much longer than the period scrutinized by investigators. Henry John Kerner, a lawyer who serves as the special counsel in the United States Office of Special Counsel, wrote a four-page letter to Brandon, saying he's forwarding a report sent to him by the U.S. Department of Justice as a response to disclosures of wrongdoing at the ATF. I'll share the link to that letter in the description for all you Second Amendment nerds out there. So, Kerner said in this letter that he examined the disclosure, agency report, and whistleblower comments. He concluded that the results contained the necessary information mandated by the law and seem reasonable. The letter then says that the whistleblowers who authorized the disclosure of their identities were working within departments of the Office of Human Resources and Professional Development, or HRPD, at the ATF. They both claimed that laws, regulations, and rules were violated, and funds were wasted due to the ATF's long-standing policy and practice of intentionally misclassifying non-law enforcement jobs as law enforcement roles, primarily supervisory ones, as part of its career plans for special agents and industry operations investigators, or IOI. They elected that individuals selected for these positions, despite not performing law enforcement duties, were allowed to retain benefits specific to law enforcement personnel, such as enhanced retirement benefits and law enforcement availability pay, otherwise known as LEAD. The whistleblowers argued that the agency failed to comply with the legal and policy requirements for payment of LEAD by paying it to individuals who were not actively occupying primary or secondary law enforcement positions, as evidenced by the absence of annual certification. On the second page of the letter, under the Investigative Findings section, Kerner said the allegations made by the whistleblowers were confirmed by the agency. Following an internal investigation, the agency deferred to an ongoing Office of Personnel Management, or OPM, audit for fiscal years 2016 to 2021 and accepted most of the findings, with a few exceptions. OPM discovered that the ATF's special agent and IOI career plans, which mandated 52 weeks of continuous service in permanent positions at ATF headquarters as a prerequisite for advancement, led to the use of standardized position descriptions, or PDs, that deviated from OPM qualification standards and resulted in the misclassification of these positions. In total, 91 misclassified positions were identified in four directorates by OPM, and ATF self-identified an additional 17 positions for a total of 108 positions affected. Of these positions, ATF acknowledged that 70 were misclassified, but contested the designation of 38 others, stating that updated PDs were required to accurately reflect job duties. ATF requested that OPM reconsider its conclusions about these positions and submitted reconsideration requests for 32 of the 91 misclassified positions. OPM also found that special agents who 
occupied misclassified positions continued to receive enhanced retirement and leap in violation of law and policy. ATF accepted that this allegation was substantiated. Overall, OPM concluded that ATF leadership demonstrated disregard for federal human capital management laws, regulations, policies, and practices. To assess the wasted funds attributed to the misclassification of positions, the ATF examined the increased cost incurred in filling such positions with law enforcement personnel rather than employees qualified for the positions based on job duties for the five-year period audited by OPM. The agency included various costs such as leap payment, federal employees' retirement system benefits, federal old age, survivors and disability insurance, Medicare tax, thrift savings plan contributions, and permanent change of station or PCS reimbursements. ATF admitted to excess costs of at least $9.7 million over the five-year period, which accounts for the 70 positions agreed to be misclassified by the agency and OPM, but conceded that the figure could be as high as $19.7 million if all 108 positions are confirmed to be misclassified. On page 3 of Kerner's love letter to Brandon, under the corrective action section, he outlined the actions that will be taken as a response to this finding. If you're impatient, the short version is, none of what I just said at the start of the video will apply to the ATF's corruption. Heck, the ATF won't even get a slap on the wrist. Let's go through their specific corrective action, shall we? The first thing OPM did was it indefinitely suspended the ATF's authority to classify positions within the General Schedule 1800 jobs, which retroactively took effect on November 2, 2020, until matters are resolved to OPM satisfaction. Also, OPM, DOJ, and ATF have been in ongoing discussions about what is required to address the wrongdoing. Thus far, ATF has discontinued existing career plans for positions in the 1801 and 1811 job series and submitted revised career plans for review and approval. ATF has begun the process of updating PDs to accurately reflect job duties. In May 2021, the agency gave the incumbents in the 70 misclassified positions three options. 1. Reassignment 2. Remaining in the position following reclassification as a non-law enforcement officer contingent on the ability to qualify for the position or 3. Retirement that calendar year. The ATF also boasted the implementation of new programs and procedures in response to the mandatory and suggested actions from the OPM evaluation. It has completed the new job analysis and quality review process, standard operating procedures, launched the new human resources liaison program, established a new strategic recruitment form, hired personnel and implemented a quality review process, and reorganized human resources operations division. The DOJ's Justice Management Division has recruited a classification expert who will work in conjunction with OPM and ATF to develop and execute a plan to reassess the duties and ensure the appropriate classification of the outstanding positions. The Internal Affairs Division of the ATF is, quote, currently investigating the details surrounding the implementation of the illegal policies and practices. What a joke. Oh, and I almost forgot the kicker. The whistleblowers said in their comments that the report did not fully capture the extent of ATF's illegal practices or the complete impact of the harm caused. So, in a nutshell, the corrupt geniuses over at the ATF have been intentionally misclassifying jobs and illegally overpaying some of their employees, resulting in a minimum of $20 million in losses. Let me repeat, that is a minimum of $20 million. The whistleblowers did suggest that it could be way more than that amount, and if these whistleblowers didn't make the discovery from within the ATF, this corrupt practice wouldn't have been exposed. The investigation only covered the last five years, which means before Brandon even assumed office, and possibly before Trump did, this corruption has been going on for years. And the worst part is, no one is going to prison, no one is going to get fired, no one will be given disciplinary action. This is millions of dollars of taxpayers' money, our money, millions of dollars that went to these corrupt ATF agents' pockets. They didn't get a reprimand, they weren't even told to return the money they effectively stole. Disgusting. And with the ATF stupid pistol brace rule, these people are empowered to arrest individuals who only have a pistol brace attached to their short-barreled pistol. Wow. Just wow. The very same people who stole millions of our tax money will put some of us in prison starting May 14th because of some stupid pistol brace rule they came up with. I don't know what to say. I'm getting a little hot under the collar here. If you like what we do here at The Two-Way Report, please share this video with your family and friends so they know what's going on. Like, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon too if you want more of these types of videos. Thanks, and you have a good one.